Marriage is a sacred covenant. It's not only an agreement between a man and a woman, but it is also ordained by God. It is honored by God and God should be in the midst of a marriage. And when we understand that, we'll be a lot more careful about how we address marriage and how we treat each other within marriage and even outside of marriage, people who are not married. There are certain things that are reserved for married people. And when we respect that covenant, we position ourselves better so that God can unite us with the person who he wants us to have that sacred bond and union with. And then God will be in the midst of the marriage and you can be happy and you can please the Lord and enjoy each other for the rest of your lives. As always, it is such a pleasure to be here for the Sanctuary Sunday School. And I'm excited because this, we're approaching our second year anniversary. I can't believe this time has flown by. I appreciate those of you who tune in every single week. And if this is your first time, go ahead and subscribe, tap that bell and stay here with us for more and more anniversaries. And as of the first Sunday in September, I have a new set that we're going to be launching as well as more things. You know, I try to step it up a little bit every year. So we're going to the next level. Thank you for going there with me. This week's subject is a covenant to marry. And I studied and I have notes and my notes are at home and I'm in a studio. But, you know, my dad taught me to know your lesson so well that you can deliver even if your notes blow away. So that's what we're going to do today. If you see anything that I missed, then call me on it. You know, put it in the comments, email me, let me know. Let's get this lesson done. So we're talking about Ruth. And last week we talked about Ruth and Naomi and how she stayed with Naomi and she took her as her mother. And that's just such a touching, beautiful story. And it tells you about the character of Ruth. And so I told you last week, this week is going to be about Ruth and Boaz. And when Ruth committed to Naomi as a mother, Naomi was a mother to her. He said, okay. And she told her, she said, okay, you decided to stay with me. I couldn't get you to leave and go back to your people and find your husband. So I'm going to step in and play matchmaker. And I'm going to find your husband under my, among my people. And so she said, I'm going to find you rest. And that means to find someone to be a husband to you so that you don't have to be a widow and you don't have to suffer. So that's what Naomi did. And that's something that I really like. I love Naomi as well, because that's what is kind of missing now. Those old mothers who look out for you and they know what to do and they'll pull you to the side and they'll tell you what it is that you have to do. So that's what Naomi did for Ruth. And we see that Ruth listened to her and Naomi told her, she said, go wash yourself and go anoint yourself and the find you some raiment. So go clean yourself up, you know, smell good, look good, put on some clothing. And that's a lesson for us as well. You know, in church and some churches, we teach modesty and moderation, which is always in order. But it doesn't mean that you have to be a homely. You know, you can you can take care of yourself. I know my mom would always tell me, she say, look, get up, clean yourself up comb your hair and put some clothes on, even if you're not leaving the house. And she would always say, nobody wants to come home to somebody who was looking like a hag. And that's my mother would say to me, and that's good teaching. So as women, sometimes we get busy and we get overwhelmed and we're taking care of everybody. I'm a member of what they call that sandwich generation where you're taking care of your children and you're also taking care of your parents and you're still trying to squeeze you a life in there somewhere. But at any rate, always take time, ladies, always take time to take care of yourself. So we see here that that's what Naomi told Ruth to do. And we're talking about Ruth and Boaz. And of course, we hear the ladies talking about finding Boaz. But if you want to attract Boaz, then you need to put some time into yourselves and make sure that you're doing the things that Ruth did to prepare for your Boaz. And so then we're talking about that. And she told him, and this is one thing that I like, they did their research. Ruth knew that Boaz was a close kinman. And the significance of that is that back in that day, when a woman was a widow, the closest kinsman to her husband could take her as a wife to take care of her. 
And so that is what this the custom was. So she knew that Boaz was a kinsman and she also watched Boaz. She knew about that he would be down on the threshing floor and it said that he went with wheat and went always to just to, to separate the wheat from the chaff. And she knew that he would be there and she knew that he would eat and he would drink and he would fall asleep. She had paid attention and she knew all about him. And that's a good point for women today because for some reason, Church women have a reputation for being gullible and, and you know, kind of naive, which is not true and should not be the case. Because if you have the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost comes the spirit of discernment. And so you can't just let people come and tell you any old thing when you don't really know anything about them. So I wanted to interject that right there. It's not like they just went and found some stranger that they didn't know anything about it. And, and Ruth was just so desperate. I got to find me a husband and I'm just going to go snag this man. No, she was patient and she took her time and she followed her mother-in-law's instructions. And they found a man that they knew who he was. They knew his quality. They knew where he lived. They knew what he had. And they knew that he had the capability and that he was a man of integrity who would take care of her properly. So as women, just not, you know, you, if you're, if you're ready for marriage, always seek the Lord. And the Lord is, is powerful and he will give you the desires of your heart but he also gave you a mind and he gave you good sense. And there are some things and sometimes when God is just requiring you to use your mind and you definitely want to use your mind when you are stepping into something like as powerful as marriage. And so that's what Naomi and Ruth, they sat down and they got this plan together and they knew exactly what they wanted to do. And so we see that Ruth went and she went in unto Boaz. And when she got there, Naomi had told her, OK, don't tell him, don't let him know that you're there until after he's eaten and after he's falling, falling asleep. And so we see that he was there on the threshing floor and it was around midnight and Ruth came in and it says that he was fearful. You know, she startled him because he's looking like, OK, who is this person that's coming in here at midnight like this? And this woman came. And any time that you see a woman go to visit a man like this in this situation at this hour, it can be a little questionable as to what the intent is. And there are some people who suggest that something inappropriate happened on this threshing floor. But we see here he asked her, he said, who are you? And Ruth answered and told him who she was. And then she said, thou art a close kinsman. That statement indicated to Boaz that Ruth was looking for marriage. I am not just some woman who came down here to lie with you. I am not somebody that's just here looking for a one night stand. I am looking for marriage. And it says that Boaz uh, referred to her as a virtuous woman. Typically, when women allow things to happen that's inappropriate, men do not refer to them as virtuous women. So it says here that he referred to her as a virtuous woman and that she made her her um, intentions 100 percent clear. That is a very powerful lesson for women because we hear a lot of women complaining about men and saying that there's no Boaz out there. But are we making our intentions known? You can't accept anything. You can't be willing to do anything to get a man because it never works. You might get a male, but you're not going to get a man, a husband who is actually going to do the right thing by you. If you don't approach it the right way, sometimes we approach you do. We do things. And I say again, anytime you have to go outside of the will of God to get something. I think I said this last week. When you do that, it's not a blessing. It's a trick. And so, ladies, if we compromise our virtue in order to establish a marriage, then we are automatically building problems into that marriage. But when we do things and follow the, the instructions, Ruth followed Naomi's instructions to the T. She said, everything that you have told me, that's what I'm going to do. And that is exactly what she did. And so Boaz was there with Ruth and he called her virtuous and he was and he blessed her. And then he talked about how 
He said, yes, I am a near kinsman. He said, but there is a kinsman that's nearer than I am. So in that instance, the closest kinsman, kinsman would get the first opportunity to marry Ruth. And he told her, he said, so I have to check with him and then I will work it out with him to be able to marry you. And so that's what he did. And, and that's a lesson right there because she, when he left, when she went back to Naomi and told Naomi about it, Naomi said, don't worry because Boaz is going to handle that today. And that was a really strong lesson because sometimes you see how we are in relationships for year after year with someone who can't figure out what they want to do. They don't want to, they don't know if they want to be married, your girlfriends for seven, eight, nine, 10, 20 years. What this says to me about Boaz, if you're looking, if you're with somebody that long and they still have not committed to you as a husband, probably not your Boaz. Boaz handles his business and he made that decision and he did make that decision. And I want to back up because he told her, he said, stay here the night. And then she left before anybody would know that she was there. And, and that's important too, because sometimes when you see a man and a woman leaving the place together in the morning, there can be certain assumptions made. And he did not want to do that because that would make Ruth look bad. So he, she stayed and she left. And then when she left, when she went back to Naomi, he gave her six uh, loaves of barley to take back to her mother-in-law. She didn't leave empty handed. And it reminds me of, of when, when I was young. My, my father is hilarious. But when I was young and I first started dating, I came in after my dates and I went to the kitchen because I was hungry to get me something to eat. And so my dad eats in the kitchen just as calm. And he said, what, the boy didn't feed you? And I said, yes, he fed me, but it was early and I'm hungry again. She, he said, well, you ought to brought home a doggy bag or something so you can eat that. And I thought about that because when you're with, somebody who really has your best interest at heart, you're not going to come home empty handed. And even I look at my parents, my parents have been married 63 years. And my dad, he always has something for my mother. It's either her favorite ice cream cone, her favorite candy cone, uh, candy bar, anything, even if it's a small thing. And they're always thinking of and looking out for each other. Anytime, even if you bring them something, he'll ask, well, where's your mom's? Or she'll ask, where's your father's? And that's how it should be. And so, you know, if you're in something again and you always coming up empty hands, you always go home with nothing, then you may want to go back and look for that because God has something better for you and you don't have to settle. Men don't have to settle and women don't have to settle. When God is in the midst of a union, a covenant, to marry, when you make that covenant and God is at the center of that covenant, you can truly live happily ever after. Happily ever after is not a fairy tale. It is real because God is real, but we have a certain standard to live by, a certain criteria to meet in order to achieve that. So I'm gonna go back. And so uh, we talked about Boaz and he went and he made sure that he'd handled his business so that he was able to marry Ruth and we know that that is how this story ends. And this lesson is so chock full of little nuggets for us on, on how to live and how to treat each other and how to be upright and how to be honest, how to make your intentions knows, known, how to be straightforward. You don't, you don't have to be slick. How to also be able to discern and not allow people to just tell you anything. And I would not say that just men do it. Women do it as well. You've got to be so careful. And I said, sometimes we rely on God, which we should and faith, but also God is required. What faith without works is dead. So we have the responsibility to do some due diligence and just not jump into situations that God has not uh, intended for us to be in. And we're talking about this covenant of marriage. And that is such a beautiful covenant. And we know that God honors marriage. God honors the marriage between a man and a woman throughout the Bible. You will see it over and over again. And if you are seeking marriage, do not be discouraged. If you are married, God bless you and continue to keep it together. And remember that God is at the center of any covenant to marry.